So, Mbote Nusiemi, uh, welcome to another live episode. Uh, if you were in the previous live broadcast, we had some technical problems and therefore we had to migrate to uh, StreamYard. So if you're here joining us, uh, make sure to share and like this video. Um, of course, I'm here with Dr. Luya Luca and we're talking today about the mystery of the rainbow within the Bukongo tradition. Now, I will skip my introduction, everything I said in our previous uh, live stream because of time, and we will go directly to Dr. Luya Luca and to start this uh, episode. So thank you for being here. Yes, don't forget to like and share this live broadcast. Um, Bote. Yes. Bote. Nabi Kefas. Bote, Dr. Louis Luca. Thank you for inviting me again um, in order to speak about the mystery of the rainbow in African traditional religion. But in order to clarify things, we will first introduce the divine human divide in the practice of African traditional religion. This will lead us to distinguish the two components of the human practice of African traditional religion, the civil and the martial. After these preliminary, preliminaries, these long preliminaries, we will land on the issue of the rainbow as the master symbol of martial initiation in mm -hmm. African traditional religion. The great wisdom of our ancestors in the practice of religion was not, not to impose its higher high spiritual demands equally on all sections of society. They thus conceive the practice, the praxis of their religion in two sections, a divine practice based on the purification of thoughts and a human practice based uh, essentially on rights and on a contextual ethics. But to better understand these two kind of practices of African traditional religion, let us first explain some key theological notions. And these we will do by relying on the chemetic cosmological argument. We, we stress this argument because it allowed the Africans to understand that their religion is an exact science since the time of ancient Egypt. And this is very important thing because African traditional religion is the highest epistemic value revealed by God to humanity. So I can introduce this chemical cosmological argument this way. I'm an individual being, you are an individual being, therefore this temporal universe in which we abide has an individuality. It is an individual entity. And because it is an individual entity, it is the effect of an individual cause. Within the setting of infinite possibility, the individual nature of this cause begs the, the, the existence of other causes. They might have not yet created their temporal universes, but, but they exist. Therefore, we have potential causes and effective causes. Here, I introduce an hypothesis. The hypothesis is that Every creation exists in its creator. Now, provided this hypothesis, there is an entity which includes all the 
potential and effective causes. This entity is therefore the greatest possible being. It is Ndambi Ampungu to Lendo. Therefore, Ndambi Ampungu to Lendo being the greatest possible being must be indivisible and immutable. Because if he were not, then there might be a principle of his divisibility and mutability. And that principle must be greater than him, which means greater than the greatest possible being, an impossibility. Dambi Ampungu Tuledo must be also transcendent. By transcendent, we don't only mean that he is above everything, but we mean also that he doesn't know evil. Because we, within the setting of his absolute indivisibility, in him to know and to be are the same thing. What God knows is what he is. Therefore, if the Most High knew evil, he must be infinitely good and infinitely bad, which is impossible. We have seen also that it each cause or each child of God or each lower. We, we call them also lower because they manifest the full glory of God. So they are stars, they are sun. The, the word lower is the Ra of the Egyptian. It means only sun, a star. So each of them manifest an individuality which is included in Zambia Pungu Tulendo. But Zambia Pungu Tulendo is indivisible. Therefore, each one of the lower of the children of God expresses the full glory of, of Zambia Pungu Tulendo, but in an individual manner. That fullness of God is what we call the Logos in a scientific manner. In Christianity, it, 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 it is called the Christ, which is different from Jesus. And in Bukongo, it is called Minanza, or God the Governor, at the celestial level. So, we have seen that God is transcendent. And another key doctrine is that has the greatest possible being, Dabian Pongo includes all reality. There is no reality outside of him. Because if it were, that reality added to God will result in an entity which is greater than God, which is impossible. So God includes all reality. Now, we have seen that God expresses his fullness in each one of his children. That act is an act of love, expressing infinite love to an infinite number of children. God must be the principle of love. He is love with capital L. And we have seen also that God is immutable. And because he is immutable, he cannot, he cannot withdraw the logos from his children. So God is constantly loyal to the children, expressing a quality of truth, which is loyalty in an infinite manner and to an infinite number of children, God must be the principle of truth. So he is truth with capital T, being love, being truth. The affection of God toward his children is a true one. So it is not forced. Therefore, the children of God are endowed with free will. But free will implies a choice. Hence, we come, we, we arrive to the conclusion that evil exists in heaven, but only in a potential manner. Now, in African ontology, potential existence is not true existence. As I'm speaking to you, each one of you has a lion in his mouth, but 
because he, this lion is just a potential one, nobody cares about it. So evil exists in heaven potentially to a love for the choice. Now, the misuse of free will led the child to make evil go from potential existence to manifest one. Thus, man becomes the one, the, 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 the child of God becomes the one who creates evil and not that. But to create here, it means to let it go from potential existence to manifest existence. The child of God is thus responsible for his downfall. And he can not remedy to this only through the action of the Logos, the action of divine spirit. Thus, the chemistry cosmological argument shows us that the fall of every human being is the result of his own original and subsequent misuse of the free will, the God-given free will. This, the this theology in Bukongo is confirmed by the myth of Mahungu. Mahungu, the, the original human being, was created perfect, had dominion over the, the nature. God forbid him never to go around the sacred palm tree. He disobeyed. He went around the sacred palm tree and he lost his power. He became a mere mortal. So we have here the same doctrine. So it follows that in African traditional religion, the supreme goal of devotion, the supreme goal of the initiate is to remedy to his fall, to become back a child of God, a Noziris, a Malungila, he has been prior to his fall. This involves two different approach of the practice of African traditional religion, the divine and the human. We see this distinction clearly among the Bantu people. Let me take just one example, the Bobitaba, it is an ethnic found in Republic of Congo in the northern part. They have two kinds of priests. They have a priest who is called Ndami and who officiates in the traditional temple. He is initiated in the spirits of forest, Denkoi. But in order for him to officiate, the second priests must come and go in the water and bring the miyaya, the spirit, the ancestor that abides in water. So you have here two different priesthood, the priesthood of the spirits of the forest and the priesthood of the holy ancestors. So these lead also to two kinds of practices. The Bobitaba culture therefore teaches us the existence of genuses or spirits of, and saints. Those are two different things. The former, the genuses, literally inhabit the places they protect and inhabit, and they protect and animate. So they protect and animate nature and things of nature the forest, the waters, precipice, and so on. The later, the holy ancestors inhabit a world of purity of, of which water is only a symbol. Human practice is therefore based on the spirits of the forest, bakulu banteke, or bisimbi banteke, and the spirits of water, bisimbi via maza, while the divine practice is based on the holy ancestors, bakulu ba maza. Those are two different 
kinds of entities. At the divine level, the practice of African traditional religion is essentially based on the purification of thoughts. At this level are found the notion of the commandments of God. When I speak about the commandments of God in Bukongo, people say, oh, this is an importation from Christianity. I say, no, I have three reasons to prove you this. First of all, the commandments of God among the Yombi people are called Congo by the very name of their nation. If, it were, if they were an importation by the white people, they will not tolerate the black people to call them by the name of their nation, which will imply an ethical superiority. Second, the golden rule was known by the Congo people. The golden rule in the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, while among the Congo people, it says, which means love your neighbor as your own body. So you have another rendition here, which is typical to the, to the Congo people. And the, the, last, the, last exp the, 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 the last point is that the notion of sin is so anchored in Congo semantic that it was not an important notion. Sumu comes from the word suma, which means to, to plant. And the reverse of suma is sumuna, to uproot. And when a plant is uprooted, it is condemned to death. Now, the fact of being uprooted is called subuka. Now, sumuka means also to sin. So we have the doctrine here that sin leads to death. So the commandments of God were known by the Congo people as part of the divine practice. On the divine level, power is the succor of holy ancestors. There is, a, this brings the need for a continuous and growing purification of thought, which can be required only of the elite. So the practice, the divine practice was the practice of a minority, minority of people, not the majority. It is therefore, as I said, the practice of a minority. A minority found today among the Bantu people, especially in Bukongo. It is within this framework that we have established the Nzilaloa Academy as a modern school of divine practice of African traditional religion. The divine practice of religion bequeathed by our ancestor is therefore essentially based on the purification of thought. And the initiate is aiming for four things. He is aiming to become back a child of God. He has been in heaven. I spoke about this. And this is seen in the Bible in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. He aims also to develop a power that will be perpetrated as human power by faith. He aims also to practice healing through the purification of thought. And lastly, he aims to fight witchcraft through the means of love, not through the means of witchcraft itself. The human practice, on the other hand, is that of the majority of the black. This is the case of Vodun, Santeria, Buiti, Palomayombe, etc., and even Kingunza among the Congo people. In fact, most of the variants of African traditional religion are based on human practice. Their characteristics are as follow: the use of the spirits of forest or water that I call the Bisimbi the use of divination, the presence of contextual ethics, which imply the absence of the notion of seed and the commandments of God, and the ambivalent nature of the power which is used, that power which originally came from the divine practice is now ambivalent, can be used for good or for bad. However, 
the bad use must be forbidden. We have seen here that the human practice in the human practice include divination, but in the divine practice, divination is not a systematic because that practice starts from the perfection of man and result in the negation of imperfection, suggestion of imperfection. So divination is not something essential there. As we have pointed above, the human practice power depends on genesis and genesis of this nature, of this nature. Therefore, when the initiate dies, his power ceases. It is a temp temporal power, while the power acquired in it lasts forever because it is based on the ancestor, the holy ancestors who doesn't depend on these temporal nature. According to the initiatic symbolism, the, in the human practice, the spirit enters the initiates by the feet, by the soul of the feet. He becomes destabilized and he doesn't know what is happening to him. While in the divine practice, the spirit enters by the head and the initiate is conscious of what is going on. As we have said above, the human practice comprises the civil practice and the martial practice. We have seen also that the purpose of the initiate is to regain his lost manifestation of the divine nature of the, of the Logos. The, in the martial initiation, the Logos is symbolized by the python, the snake python. And here we are going, we are introducing the notion of the rainbow. The rainbow is this, is symbolized or symbolizes the python. This symbolism is seen in King Kimba among the Congo people. It is seen also among in the soul, the initiation of the Beti, among uh, the Beti of Cameroon. They, they have the soul initiation in which the Python is also a great symbol. And you have the same, we have the same symbol in the Vodun. Among the Congo people, we know that the martial symbolism of the Python, we know it from the, the following fact taught in King Kimba. First of all, the commander of the army is called Nkwamboma, Ngamboma or Mamboma, which means the owner, the head of the python. So this make us make it clear that the army is called a python. The military fortification of the barrack, military barrack, is called Boma. And after his training, the new initiates of the King Kimba, the, the Marshal Academy, the Congo Marshal Academy, had to be licked by two snakes, a male and a female one, which implies that. He is himself a kind of snake. The fact that the commander of the army is called the ruler of the python impl implies that these later, the python symbolized also the army. Thus the army had to manifest the qualities expressed by the python. Among this quality, we have vigilance. It is proverbial among the Congo people that the python sleeps only with one eye. The other eye is half, half open, which expresses vigilance. And this vigilance is a quality that must be expressed by the army. And we have also strength and we have flexibility. 
according to the Congo culture, the python, which is the main symbol of the martial initiation, the python, the python is symbolized on the sky by the rainbow. The protective nature of the rainbow is taught in the culture of Luango. Now, Luango is one of the, the part of the kingdom of Congo, which was between, be, be, between the, 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 the Republic of Congo and Gabon, a stride of, uh, of this, those two countries. And in the Luango, the true commander of the army was the prime minister. And he was called Mambo Machiluangu. The curator of the Museum of Loango explains this title as the one who possesses the Chiama. Now, Chiama means rainbow. So the prime, the prime minister was the possessor of the rainbow whose protection spreads over the land. So we see that the rainbow stands here as a protective, a protection for the Luanga, for the Congo people. The fact that the, rain, the rainbow stands for a python whose head and tail are in water. And this fact is very important because in order to neutralize a snake, you must seize his head and his tail. Then he can do nothing. So it means that since the rainbow has the tail, is a snake whose head and tail are in water, it means that the true martial power is in water, which is means the true martial power is to be found among holy ancestors. The rainbow symbolizes the Logos. We have seen that the Logos is the fullness of God, which fullness in, in Christianity we call the Christ, and in Bukongo we call Pinanda of the celestial level. At the temporal level, it becomes Kimalungila or Kimawungu. Now, the rainbow, the, the word, the word for rainbow in Kikongo is Lukongolo. Lukongolo. Now Lukongolo means also the circle. These recall the bracelets, which is called Lunga, which was worn by the initiates. It is a symbol of unity. Now, lunga means fullness. So you see here, you, you are recalled the concept of the fullness of God. The rainbow symbolizes the fullness of God as a martial power to be used for the protection of the land, of the people. The rainbow, according to the Congo people, is made, according to the observation, observation it is made of two arcs, a bright one and a dim one behind. According to the Congo classification, the bright one is male and the dim one is female. So we have here the male female symbolism, which in Bukongo allude also to the fullness of God. God is male and female. And human beings in the image, made in the image of God, are also male and female. The right part of the body is called male and 
the left part of the body is called female. So that means that there is a fullness of God, which is the logos in you and me. But that fullness must be awakened in order to become manifest because it has become it has become potential due to our bad views are free will. So the rainbow stands for the logos has the martial power. At the center of the practice of African traditional religion is the notion of the logos, the manifestation of the fullness of God. But we have seen that in the martial initiation, this logos is symbolized by the rainbow. So the rainbow symbolize the power of God for the protection of the land and of the people. It means protection, strength, flexibility. It means also vigilance, which are essential for the protection of the land. Thank you. Yes, Matondo, Dr. Louis Luca. For everyone watching us live, if you have a question for Dr. Louis Luca, just put it in the chat. But make sure that your question concerns our topic of today. Okay, so don't deviate coming with uh, questions that had nothing to do with our topic. All right, so that's all the rules. So if you have any questions, make sure <clears throat> that it deals with our discussion of today. Ingeta, that's all. Yes, uh, Dr. Louis Luca, I remember in uh, talking about the rainbow. Um, now, let me just say this, because uh, my audience, many of them are Bible readers. Many, many of them are ex-Christians, people used to go to church. Um, so they are very familiar with the Bible. Yes? Yes. Now, when we look into the Bible, <clears throat> we see that the rainbow is first mentioned in Genesis 9, verse 13. In accordance with the covenant which God made with Noah and all the living creatures. And when you study the word rainbow in, um, in the concordance, in the Hebrew Strongs, uh, we get the word keshet, which is a feminine noon. And the definition is bow for hunting, battle, and it signifies, or figuratively, it signifies might. So when mm -hmm. we put that in contrast with the Bukongo uh, tradition, we see that the symbol of the rainbow signifies might okay, in yes. accordance with the definition of the Hebrew word for rainbow, keset, which is defined as hunting, both for hunting and battle. Figuratively, it denotes might. And that mm -hmm. might is seen in the mystery school, uh, Kinkimba, Yes. As the Mboma. Mm -hmm. Right? The python. Yes, the Mboma, the python. So we have uh, the Bible beside it, the Congo beside it, and we see the comparison between the two. Uh, but, Dr. Luya Luca, is this not Kindoki? Is this not like witchcraft? seeing a python in the rainbow? Uh, how it, is, can... it is not Krish, uh, witchcraft. It is Kindoki. Mm -hmm. Now, Kindoki doesn't mean witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Kindoki means mystery knowledge. Mm -hmm. That is knowledge leading people to see more than the, than the, common, per, the common people. Kindoki can be divine. 
it can be human, it can be demonic. So here, if we, because we are in, within the frame of the practice of African traditional religion, we are speaking of the divine kindoki and the human kindoki. So the rainbow symbolizes the human kindoki has the power of protecting the land, the power of peace, the power that must bring peace in the land, just as it is said in the case of, of the Bible. But let's, let me stress something because you spoke about, about the witchcraft. We have seen that power is first developed from the divine mysteries has through the purification of thoughts mm -hmm. and has the sacor of divine ancestor, holy ancestor. That power thus developed is perpetuated as a human power. It is perpetuated as the sacors of the genuses of nature. And that power becomes an ambivalent power that can be used for good or for evil. But normally the evil use is forbidden. Now, you mentioned witchcraft. Witchcraft is used in the human mystery in the case of war has an exception. And it is very important to mention this because people confuse and some teach it that, oh, witchcraft is good because the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese people has won the war by using witchcraft. I don't agree with this. And I give a simple exam example. I say, if there is a war between two countries, the soldiers of our country go and steal the blueprints, the plan of the war of the enemies. It will enable us to win. So it is a good thing. But does it mean that robbery is to be tolerated in the society? No. So it means that that use of robbery in order to steal the plan of the enemy is an exceptional use. And the use of witchcraft in case of war is an exception. It must not be the rule as some people teaches. We have an example I have I, I, among the Yoruba, I think they have a, a divinity called Shango. And Shango is also a god of witchcraft. But it is specified that his use is exceptional in case of war. So witchcraft is an exception. It's not the, it's not the principle, the, right? The use, the use, the use of yeah. witchcraft. Mm -hmm. The use in case of war is an yeah. exception. In case of war, and it's an exception. It means that. Witchcraft must not be used in order to retaliate in society. That will bring bad effects in within the society. In order to solve our problems, we have to use love. Mm, this way, but when when the enemy attack, those mm. who go in war can use witchcraft against the enemy. Oh. That is an exception. Your explanation might give us clarity on why the Haitian people use witchcraft in the revolution to fight yes. the enemy. Yes, of course. Right? Yes, so of course. Using... Because witchcraft is a weapon. Mm -hmm. The weapon is the weapon is intended to kill the enemy. So we can use also witchcraft, but that use of witchcraft is an exception. It's only an exception. I, someone wrote to me after reading my book on Bukonga, and he said to me, I'm a Ninishek of Palo Mayombe. But after reading your books, I realized that I should not use witchcraft in order to retaliate or in order to avenge people. I said, yes, witchcraft too should be used exceptionally in case of war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's something. Now, this, um, 
will give a lot of people more insight and understanding in this case. <clears throat> so witchcraft is only used in war to fight your enemy. Yes. Now, Dr. Lou Luca, uh, talking about the rainbow, you said uh, that the rainbow, Lu Congo Lu, uh, yes. comes from the word, um, another word you said, Longo or something? It, 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 means, it means also the circle. The circle, yes. It means also it circle. Means also the circle. Now, the circle from this, the circle is called also Lungu. Lungu, and right. Lungu, Lungu is the bracelet, which is a circle worn by the initiates, that the initiate. And that Lungu symbolizes the fullness of God. Exactly. So the <laughs> rainbow stands for the fullness of God, has mm -hmm. the power to be used to protect the land. Mm -hmm. So the fullness of God is like, it's like one can be clothed in it yeah? with the fullness. One can, you know, it can come upon you. How can yes, we see Yes, it? of course. Right? Because, can because upon you, like uh, Jesus said, you will be endued, right? To let, be us explain it. let me explain it another way. Mm -hmm. each, each child of God has the fullness of God in him. Okay? If we take the children of God around him as a collective child of God, that collective child of God has also the fullness of God in him. So we have a double pattern here. The, full, the, the logos is the fullness of God in you. It is also the fullness of God around you. And this brings to the protective nature mm -hmm. of the logos. Has has a cloud that is surrounding you or has something that is <clears throat> enclosing you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Dr. Luluka. You said it's like a cloud that surrounds you. Yes. 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 So yes. People pay attention yes. what we're saying here. I, I, I use the I I see the symbol of a cloud in in in, in the the meaning of uh, surrounding because the, the presence of God is all around you. And that mm -hmm. presence is the Logos. And yeah. the rainbow symbolizes the Logos. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, the, the rainbow <clears throat> in the Bukongo tradition signifies um, the fullness of God from the word longa or lunga. It signifies yes. the fullness of God. And, and as we understand the Hebrew word keshet, which also means might, so we can yes, see that the fullness of God also operates in the yes. Kimba mystery eh, uh, of Marshall. So as yeah. we are fighting a battle against our enemies, the fullness of God can operate in us to give us supernatural strength. And around us also. And around us. That. Yes, it operates in us, around us, and it enables us to fight with supernatural strength. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes. Mm. So we can be like David. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. That is why it, it is a martial symbol. It shows the Logos, the Christ has the power, the protective power of God, the defensive power that may be used by the army. So that's why the commander of the army is called the Python, mm -hmm. a rainbow, Chiama among the Vili. Mm. He, he he has the rainbow that is mm. the protective power of the land. Chama. Yes, Chama. So Kuku Alsar has a question. He says, if someone is spiritually attacking you, 
Is this not a war against you personally? I need clarification on what on what defines a war. We must we must distinguish war has the community attacked by an external enemy enemy. And we must distinguish also war has a fight within the community. When someone attacked me by using witchcraft, it is a war within the community. What I need in this case is to, to fight back by using love, by using, by, by, by using not witchcraft, but by using what I call warning. Let me give here an example so people will understand what, what, what I'm, I'm talking about. I know a young man who was living with his cousin, and the cousin was constantly attacking him every night. So he will wake, wake up at three o'clock in the morning and realize that his cousin is just be at, at his door attacking him mentally. And this happened, happened often and often. And then one day the thought came to him that you have to defend yourself. So what he did when that day the cousin attacked him using witchcraft, he, he realized that there is no power in witchcraft. And he realized that God knows it in my cousin that we, if the evil we think we are doing to other people, we are doing it to ourselves because the other is yourself. Remember the golden rule. So that if you think that you are harming the other, you are harming yourself. So see through this understanding, he, 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 he stood by this knowing that he cannot attack me because he knows, as God knows it in him, that the evil we do to other people react with seven, 70 times seven more power against ourselves. The result was that the attack ceased. The attack ceased because he didn't use witchcraft, but he did use love. That is the pattern we must use. We must use love within the setting of the community. Yes, I think this also answers the question of uh, Fusili Mbuyisa. Um, doctor, you mentioned you can use witchcraft as a, as a tool, a weapon to fight. What other weapon can you use to fight spiritual attacks? So Dr. Louis Luca and I, we're not talking about fighting spiritual battle. Uh, we're talking about when you are fighting an enemy who's coming against your nation. So in that sense of war, witchcraft can be used as an exception to fight your enemy. Yeah, but as a community, we do not fight each other uh, and use witchcraft against each other. But can you but, respond on this uh, question? Yes. In the spiritual war, I mean, when someone attacks you, you have to use truth. You have spiritual truth and spiritual love. There are a lot of... There are a lot of truth in the Bible that give us power, that show us that we can win the enemy. For example, when I'm attacked, I start always from the fact that I'm a child of God, and the other is also a child of God. And as a child of God, I'm hidden in God. This is a powerful strategy that can help you win that war by knowing that you are enclosed within divine love. And knowing also that the so-called witch is also enclosed in that love. And that outside of that love, it is death. 
And by clanging on this, you will win. So just to, to clarify, yeah, so when you say that we need to use uh, witchcraft, of, that we can use witchcraft in times of war, yeah. what is witchcraft exactly? What, what kind of witchcraft are you talking about? Witchcraft, witchcraft is the use of evil spirits in order mm. to produce an effect. Mm -hmm. Let when 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 someone comes with you in case of war, he's animated. He, he, he come to he come to to kill you, to blemish the situation. He is motivated by what? By evil spirits. So he is using witchcraft against you. But if you are motivated by higher power, which is the power of love, the power of the Christ, you have authority over, over those evil spirits. And you can send them, them back to the enemies. But as I said, this is exceptionally to be used in case of war. So witchcraft is the use of evil spirits in order to bring an evil effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in the story of, in the biblical story, um, we are told that the rainbow was a covenant of God in Noah and all the living creatures for peace. Right? And you said that the rainbow yeah. uh, in the Bukongo tradition, the rainbow is a symbol of protection. Yes. If yeah. you are protected, if you are protected, you are in peace. Protection and peace go together. If the country have a strong army, the country is in peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to say that the rainbow is a symbol of peace and to say that the sim it is a symbol of protection, it is the same thing. But I, I the also... Only, the, 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 only, the only addition in the book Congo is that that peace, that protection is seen as the activity of the Logos. That is a dimension that is added in the book Congo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the rainbow uh, is only known as a symbol of peace, yeah, a symbol of love, the love of God for humanity, right? For Noah's family and creation. But mm -hmm. it actually is also a symbol of might, of strength. And the Hebrew... Yes, and the Hebrew uses a feminine nun. And when we when we study the prayer of um, Kimbangu, he makes mention of the God creator of the rainbow's light, whom he called Mbumbaloa. So is Mbumbaloa connected with the rainbow? The rainbow is connected with every one of us. Mm -hmm. it connected with every, because you said that in the Bible, the rainbow is feminine. Yes. But within the setting of the Congo culture, the, the rainbow is male and female. That is why the rainbow is connected with is it is the expression of the logos, mm -hmm. the fullness of God. And that fullness in the martial context is a power of protection, is the power of peace, it is vigilance for the for, for the sake of the nation, it is flexibility within the army, it is strength, and so on and so on. Mm, yes, actually. That uh... is, that is why the pharaoh 
on his forehead had the sign of a python because mm -hmm. he is first of all a warrior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah biblically the rainbow is a complete circle okay? yes is it biblically it's a complete circle what we call lukongulu is yes. a complete circle so when he established uh, so the complete circles uh, signifies fullness mm -hmm. of God. Eh? That's the fullness, fullness of God. God. The fullness of God. So when he established his covenant, he divided the circle in half. One half he put in the cloud as a bow, a rainbow. And the other half we see in the book of Revelation, uh, half encircling the throne of God. So it's actually, mm -hmm. I can concur that it deals with the feminine and masculine who completes itself in the fullness of God. Yes. And yeah. you must, we must add that in Book Congo, the, it is also a complete circle with the lower part heated in water. But in Book Congo, this has another, this adds another meaning. The head and the tail of the, ra the rainbow has a snake. Remember always, always that the rainbow for the Congo people is a snake. The rainbow is a python. Mm -hmm. And that python has his head in water and its tail in water. Now the head and the tail are the might of the snake, which means that the might of the rainbow is among the ancestors who lived in Pemba. It means that the true might, the ultimate martial might is to be found in the purification of thoughts. Yes. Yes, and the fullness of God, just to say, and to add, the fullness of God can also uh, denote his glory. Yes, fullness yes, of God can also denote his glory, the glory of the Most High. Yes. Yes, uh, wonderful. Uh, Dr. Luca, I think this, um, this conversation... <laughs> will be difficult for many people to understand and grasp what we're actually saying here. Um, but I would like to encourage all of you to go on Amazon and to order the book Bukongo. In that book, Dr. Luluka explain everything in far deeper um, manner far deeper manner. It goes into depth and it will help you a lot to understand what we saying here and to follow this conversation uh, better. And so for all of you who, who can or go and uh, order it, it's on Amazon. It's called a Bukongo by Dr. Luya Luca. Um, doctor, how can people find you online? Who, who, which platform? They can find they can follow me on Facebook. They just have to Google my name, Luya Luca. I'm the only one Luya Luca on Facebook. So they have just Googled my name, Luya Luca. They will find me on Facebook. They can find me also on YouTube. My channel is Ndila Loa One. You write, write it as one word, Ndila Loa One, and you, but they will find me. Okay. Um. Is that why they use the LGBT symbol as a rainbow? Oh, <laughs> what's the place? <laughs> yeah, the LGBTs uh, community of homosexuals and things like that. No, that yeah. is another thing. The, the, it is the the the, 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 the uh, we don't. It is it, it is a different thing. They yeah. use. That, same, that symbol in their manner in order to, to, to mean their reality. 
in Congo tradition, in African tradition, the rainbow is a snake. The, the people must understand this. The rainbow stands for a python. So in, mm -hmm. in LGBT, it doesn't stand for a python. That is another symbolism that has not to do with uh, the spirituality of the black people. Yes, the rainbow is a symbol of might, symbol yes. of strength, and symbol of peace. See, through might, you will have peace. Yeah, and, a... and moreover, moreover, in African traditional, the rainbow is male and female. Mm -hmm. yes. So these cut with the problem mm -hmm. of LGBT. It is mm -hmm. male and female. That it is in good order. To the completeness of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in good order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, the natural order, right? Because yes. the natural order is based after the spiritual order. Mm -hmm. yeah? So the completeness, the fullness of God is male and female. Let us make man into our image and he make like him it. male and female. And the, the was actually Mahungu, eh? yes. who was yes. the fullness of God. He had the fullness in him. He was a, 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 a being of male and female in one, right? Yeah. And through sin, the story tells us that he was split in two. And there we had a woman and man mm -hmm. who marry each other now to once again come into that completeness and produce children. Let me mention here that within the setting of black tradition, mm -hmm. God is male and female. In Sumer, the Most High was called Anu. That was also his male nature. His female nature was called Antu. And it is the same for all the divinities. They are male and female. But not in the Bible. The, because the Bible... Yes, I, I, I'm coming to this. I'm coming okay, to this. Go ahead. It, is, it is the Grecian civilization that brought the the patrilinear concept of God, where God becomes a, you, a, a male being. But in the African rendition, God is male and female. And the fact that the human being are created in his, in his image is seen also by the fact that we are also male and female. So that picturing God as a male person is a Western tradition. It is a Western interpretation of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, it was the, the Romans yes, who introduced uh -huh. uh, the concept of a male God, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that, that is what I call Kadian Pemba, because that's mm -hmm. not how things work. No, no. So there is a story of, um, let me, I have it here somewhere. So in Jewish mysticism, the bow is associated with divine or glory, which is the mm -hmm. immanent God, according to the Zohar, a mystical commentary on the Torah, the mm -hmm. rainbow is identified with the Shekinah. The Shekinah yeah. is the divine glory, the indwelling feminine divine presence. Mm -hmm. so, it's the feminine divine presence of God. So she, it is said, shared her rainbow-colored garment with Moses when he ascended Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered the mountain. Now, that cloud covering the mountain, it's actually the glory or the fullness of God 
covering him as he entered into the circle of the Most High. And the circle of the Most High in, um, in biblical Hebrew, the circle of the Most High represents the council of heaven. Yes, it's like he climbing that mountain, presenting himself before the council of heaven and the cloud surrounding him, closing him up, the fullness of God filling him and surrounding him as he received the words to transmit to the people. And that's exactly what you talked about, right? When yeah, you talk yeah. about the fullness of God surrounding us and abiding in us. Yes, yes. Within the setting of African traditional mm -hmm. religion, we must we do understand also that God is transcendent. So God is represented. So the fullness of God means also the presence of holy ancestors around mm -hmm. us. And within the setting of the transfiguration, it was Moses and Elisha surrounding Jesus and his two disciples. Mm -hmm. So the fullness of God is also the, the surrounding protecting presence of holy ancestors. Yes. Okay, uh, let's take, I have one question from um, where is it yes so this uh, sister or brother says um, are we the Bantu the ancient Egyptian because those teachings links with kemetic knowledge from ancient Egypt what I can tell her for sure. At, I started my lecture mm -hmm. by introducing key point by using the Kemetic cosmological argument. Now the Kemetic cosmological argument is an exact science like mathematics because it is a set of deductive covering truths. So we have with the Kemetic cosmological argument a systematic natural theology. Now, if you make a comparative study, you will see that the theology derived from that Kemetic cosmological argument is in perfect congruence with the religion of ancient Egypt, with the religion of Sumer, and with the Bukonga, so that we are empowered to affirm that the Bukonga is the continuity of the religion of ancient Egypt. Ingeta, <clears throat> for some people that is uh, confusing or scary, but you need to know the story, the history of the Congo people to really understand the answer of Dr. Luya Luca. Uh, Ingeta, um, Dr. Luya Luca, I have no further questions. I think it was a great powerful, uh, in-depth conversation. Uh, I encourage everyone who came in late to re-watch this live episode. Make sure to like this video, share yeah, if, if willing, uh, subscribe to Dr. Luya Luca's uh, YouTube page. He, what's the name of your YouTube, Dr. Luya Luca? Zila Loa One. Hmm? Zila Loa One. N Z I L A L O W A One. Exactly. Yes, Zila Loa One. So go there um, if you like what Dr. Luy Luca teaches. He goes in very deep. Not everyone can follow as he teaches or understand even <laughs> what, he's, what he's teaching. Mm -hmm. But when you continue to, to listen and, of course, read the book, Bukongo, which gives you uh, a complete history 
um, an in-depth teaching, you will begin to understand because we, the Bakongo, the Congo people, we are the source, we are the origin, you know, everything came out from Congo, which other people adopted. All right, so peace to everyone. Mbote, Kiambote, Meta Tanzambe, bless you and continue to increase you. Uh, I thank Dr. Louis Luca for his time and presence to once again come on this platform and to have this uh, wonderful uh, conversation to share his insight with uh, my audience here on YouTube. I know it was maybe difficult for you to follow, but as you continue to follow, as you continue to learn, to research, to listen, you will grow. Um, the book of Proverbs tells us, by all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding. And yeah. uh, are there final words you want to share, Dr. Luluka, before we end? My final word is that the rainbow stands for the African people as a python. The representation of the fullness of God has the protective power of the black people. And we have to understand that symbol in that manner, the rainbow and the python are not divinities. They are symbols of the divinity of the lovers. Ingeta, very important. The rainbow is a symbol, not a divinity to be worshipped, but a symbol of yes. the Logos. The mm -hmm. Logos signifying the fullness of God, which can also Christ. manifest, yes, of Christ, which can manifest itself in the spirit of might, gives you strength for warfare. Okay? Ingeta. Matondo, 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 Dr. Louis Luca. And um, yes, next time as, as we see each other again. So we 